Uh, Adam Corlick, what's up? Adam Corlick, and this is uh, Shane Lewis from Rewrites. Shane Lewis. So, random question. How do you guys feel about uh, where's the fair use right now? Do you think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon? Do you think it's going to get like real the whole co content ID thing? Yeah. I think you're going to get in trouble in this video for what's playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think a copyright and fair use right now is like a lot of like intense issues going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it mostly has to do with people that some of us don't understand what is okay and what isn't okay to use, and I think that there should be some kind of, honest to God, some kind of video Dude, that yeah. just shows us what's okay. Yeah, but YouTube themselves making their own, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, basically, no, yeah. we're on the same idea here. Yeah, basically, yeah. YouTube makes a video that they keep up all the time. It's like, here's what you can and can't do. Yeah, right? I think they did do something like that, but it's not... It bad. was terrible. It's all, they only show it to you when you're in yeah, trouble. Yeah, right? Yeah. I'd, lo I'd love to see like a list of songs we can't use. I'd love to see a yeah. bunch of artists say, say, okay, use our music. And on on, uh, on YouTube, there's a music section where you can actually download music for free and use it. You don't get claimed. But then if there's footage, yeah. if there's just a sound, you know? Yeah, any yeah. number of things is free. Yeah. I'm glad that they updated it now so that if, when it, if there is a content ID claim, they at least put the money in a safe place and don't just reward whoever's Question to Adam. Yo. So I noticed you changed your uh, setup of your show from like the POV type of top down shot to like more of a professional vibe. Why'd you do that? I guess. Uh, for a while, the whole channel was really just about look at the thing I'm talking about. You don't uh -huh. need to focus on me. And then eventually I was like, I'm mostly discussing stuff now. I'm not actually reviewing things anymore. So there's. There's no reason to just look at my hands. So it's just changed. Yeah, so that's why it just evolved. That was all it really was. It was because the content of the show changed. So this is just a question in general because I'm like a movie buff and I can't imagine the idea of not buying a movie on a DVD or Blu-ray. So yeah. Yeah. what is your greatest fear about physical media becoming a niche market? Because we're already seeing the signs of it, so... Are you talking about specifically to movies, general? Just video general, video? just general. I fear an all-digital future. Uh, yeah. I do not like the idea that you don't actually own the content you paid for. Mm -hmm. There people be like, no, 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 I owned it because I downloaded it. It's like, no, 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 you have access to it. You have a license to it. You have permission to use it as long as a corporation But you can't redistribute it for you yourself. Don't, you don't, yeah, you do not own it. It's and uh, at any time, when the server's shut down, or if a game is revoked, a movie's taken off of Netflix, whatever, that proves you don't own it. Yeah, I mean, that's the scariest thing about it, because physical media, the only way to back that up is you got a DVD of it, you got a DVD ripper, you got a big enough hard drive, yeah. and you just rip that and stuff. Yeah, you keep that stuff secret. Oh, speaking of which, because I'm sure you guys probably have thousands and thousands of videos in terms of archiving, mm -hmm. what's the biggest hard drives you have, and where do you store your hard drives? I have... I've got three or four terabyte drives, and then I just keep everything, like I keep a high quality version on there. But luckily enough, YouTube actually keeps the high quality version on the site now, mm. so I can just, oh, if I'm at somewhere like, I wanna download a high quality version, I just go and I download the original file I uploaded. So that's been a big plus. That's but amazing. You never trust a website, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I constantly back everything up just in case. Oh, yeah. You never I know. know. It's just, it's just I have case. multiple drives, mostly a bunch of six terabyte drives for that exact purpose. Mm. I also back up all the games too, from, like he was saying, yeah. the, the, the digital rips. Man, when you buy a lot of used stuff, especially disc-based media, you need to know it actually works. I know, you gotta check the discs. You yeah, gotta, it's not just checking, it's not just putting it in the game to make sure it You gotta up. make sure there are no scratches yeah. on it. So all the sectors are non-defective. Yeah. And I can do that with every console yeah. though, except the Wii U. It's the one I can't rip. Mm. What, the Wii one, U? You can't rip it? Not yet. Everything else, including What about the Wii? Yeah. The Wii you can rip. Yeah, I can rip the Wii, I can rip the GameCube, PS4, Xbox One, all of them. Everything except the Wii. How many gigabytes are the games in general, or megabytes? Depends on the console. Um, anything prior to the Dreamcast between like 50 to 700 megabytes, I mean it varies because they just use as much of the disc as they need it. Mm. Dreamcast is all like 1.1 gig specifically, and then after that all the consoles like PS2 was usually around 2 gigs, Xbox usually around 2 gigs, GameCube always 1.35 gigs, Xbox 360 is always uh, 8 gigs, always. Uh, PS3 ranges, it's usually like 30 gigs because it's Blu-ray. And same with PS4 and Xbox One. This is just something in general, but for someone like me, who's like a physical media buff, who grew up with the GameCube, it's just like looking at all this DLC crap and going, just give me the full game. And the thing that drives me insane, well, this is a question for you guys. Yeah. Do you guys think it's complete BS that the game companies are putting all this DLC stuff when Blu-rays themselves can store 50 gigabytes or more? Yes and no. It depends on the game. Like, I'm, I'm not a favor of uh, like on disc DLC or disc locked content. Because that's just wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's just me off to yeah the land. that's oh not. A, that should not be a thing. But uh, I mean, if they're giving you worthwhile downloadable content, that's on you if you want to buy it. You know those things in advance. 
in general, I do not dislike the concept of mm. DLC. I simply dislike the way it evolved. When it started with OG Xbox and Dreamcast, those had DLC. They did it correctly. And then after that, it was like, no, 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 now you pre order your DLC. Well, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, why, do you, why is that a thing now? See, my favorite part of DLC is the non-paid DLC, the stuff that comes for free. When it was on this DLC, the, what really pissed me off the most was somebody at a studio somewhere said, on this DLC is a great idea! And I was like, what the fuck? It was Capcom. Yeah, because I was Capcom like, was notorious for that. Oh my god, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Like, okay, you go to buy a house. When you go to buy the house, imagine if you bought the house and they said, okay, you just bought the house, but you have to buy the uh, the air conditioner, the washing machine, the sink, the, the, the toilets, the walls, and the doors, and the windows separately. No, dude, the bathroom's locked by the original owner, oh my and God. you have to buy the bathroom key later. <laughs> That's what like, that is. It's like, I'm just like, what's wrong? Tell somebody you're making this amazing package with all this amazing content, and it's included. Or if it's not included, it's going to be included down the line as a free piece of content. You're increasing the value of that content so much that it would kill in the marketplace. But now what they're doing is they're shooting themselves in the foot by devaluing the content so that nobody wants to go out and buy the first release. Yeah. yeah. They're like, well, nobody's buying games anymore. No, nobody wants to buy your stupid games. Yeah. But you notice how we got games coming out that are just packed with so much content and everyone loves it? That's what a good video game is. And that's what all these retro games are. Yeah. They didn't want to separate crap back then. They just yeah. put it all on the cartridge so that you could get it. Yeah. And that was all your value right there. Yeah, there was no such thing as updates. Once the game was done, it was done. Had it. If it was broken, it was crap. It was very rare for it to get re-released. The only examples I can think of is like Virtual Fighter for Saturn. They re-released this Virtual Fighter remix. But those are really uncommon events. Or like, or like uh, Resident Evil 1 had, a, had like a, a Resident the, Evil Part yeah, 2. Yeah, the DualShock edition right? later. But it's like it's like those are very rare instances, yeah. and nowadays, well, that stuff can just be DLC. Yeah. But when you're like, oh, um, the second character from Resident Evil 2, Leon, yeah, <laughs> uh, you can't have him at all. I would unlock. That. I wouldn't be surprised if that's Donald Trump leading that meeting. Donald oh, Trump from behind the scenes going uh, to be like, okay, we're gonna we're screw over the games great again. We're gonna make video games great again. We're gonna screw over the consumer. Yeah. We need to make money now. And I'll just show you how to screw over your customers. I'm Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just in general, like, the thing that drives me crazy, what I'm noticing with physical media, is that they're, Paramount's notorious for this crap now. Because now they're starting to put the bonus features on specific editions, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, why are you doing this to me? Like, it's like the movie, it's like the crap the game industry has been doing is now infecting the movie industry slowly. It was like I wanted to buy Tron, like, not Tron Legacy. Like, the original? Like, the, 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 new the new one. The, the new one, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tron. What's Legacy? What's Legacy? Okay. Yeah. I wanted to buy the new I, I, I'm so. I just forgot the name of it, but it's Tron. Legacy. Yeah, it's yeah. Legacy. Let's go with so, that. so I want to get Tron Legacy, and there was like five different versions of the movie. And I was just like, man, I just want to go to the store and buy something. You've literally made it more difficult to go to the store than for me to go home and pirate it. Like, that's not good. Yeah. Make it simple so everyone... Dude, how cheap would it be? Make one version, charge $20, let everyone buy it. Include the first movie well, if you want. to be fair, it's kind of always been like that. Like, it did start with Laserdisc, I think, you know? So that's kind of just how physical media works. And it's going to always be a deluxe set at some point. Random question, you guys like the Toy Story movies? I do. Yes. Yep. How do you guys feel about a fourth one? Because I'm a diehard one, and I'm going, no fourth one. Perfect ending. Don't do it. give Pixar a chance. They, they rarely screw up. Even with Lasseter coming back, I mean, Cars 2 was... I you can't win every time, dude. <laughs> yeah. This guy's been knocking it out of the park for 20 years. Give him we a chance. We got a good point. I, I, you know, for me, it's just like, I, I really like Pixar films. I love the animation, the quality, the, the amount of detail they put into the mm -hmm. stories, the characters. The, it's, it's, it's art. Just what how it beautiful is. it is. Yeah. It's, it's unlike anything else. But what I don't like is when... I really feel like it's Disney forcing their hand and, and, and treating yeah. it is like something that it really shouldn't be. Because it's like the only reason we got a Cars 2 was because oh. they wanted to sell toys, right? Oh, we got Cars 2 because they, uh, Pixar wanted to make Brave. And I'm sure that was the behind the scenes deal. It's like, we'll let you make Brave, but you gotta make Cars 2. We don't wanna make Cars 2. Cars make it, and then you'll get Brave. <laughs> That's how that happened. But the thing that's so annoying about Cars 2, the thing that just angered me the most about that movie, one year after Oscar Best Picture nominee, yeah. Toy Story 3, Cars 2 comes out. And the worst thing about that was it was directed by the genius who made the first two Toy Stories. Like, huh? I didn't want to do it. I mean, that's like the tragedy of it all. 
like the Matt era of Pixar will always be Cars 2 to uh, Monsters University, then Inside Out comes in, and it's like Pixar is amazing again. Yeah. And a couple of robots. Yeah. yeah. It's like any studio, right? And I, yeah, you can't always win. And, and last yeah. year was also, wasn't he the CEO of Disney or something? At no, I, I, he was just the he was just control of Pixar. He, he, at some point, he has, a, he has a good career. Oh no, the last editor was like, like 12 Oscars. Yeah. Like, I think at one point he was doing like a billion things. So, like, just imagine trying to cook an omelet while somebody is like telling you, oh, do your taxes. Oh, play that video game. Oh, uh, can you write that song? Oh, dude, can you write that script? And then he's just like, uh, dude, cars. It's a James Bond movie. James Bond movie. Uh, it's like uh, if I want to make it. Here, Michael Caine, you're going to be Bond now. And uh, Mater is a. Uh, the main character now. Like, I mean, what the hell? Sure, okay. <sighs> It's crazy to me. So you can be brave. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah. But I guess the other thing about Pixar and whether they're going with Toy Story 4 is just like, I just want new blood to come in. Like, I'd rather just see Inside Out 2 and 3 or Incredibles 2 and 3 or hell, do an incredible, do an incredible, do an incredible cinematic universe like Marvel does it. Like, you could go, the great thing about Incredibles is it's got the mythos and the universe to justify an expanded universe. Toy Story really never had that luxury. Like, the thing that drives me crazy, I'm, as I said, diehard Toy Story fan, you look at Buzz Lightyear Star Command, okay, it's a show within Toy Story Universe, that's fine, I can deal with that, and then you get to the spin-off one, first one with Jesse, that was great, it gave me something I didn't expect, then the second special comes out, why are we focusing on a side character no one cares about at all, and why do you have to make Woody and Buzz completely weak, you know, it's like, Bring new blood, Pixar. Don't just. I'm sure again, it's probably the same deal. You do Toy Story 4, we'll let you make a yeah. passion project. It's all trades. Yeah, but I'm just. That's the thing that scares me is I'm worried that Toy Story 4 could ruin what was so brilliant about the third one, which is that everything has a beginning, everything ends. Yeah. That just the symbolic nature of Andy handing Woody away is just beautiful. Yeah, I don't think you really want to go into the fourth of that, but whatever. We'll it's going to happen. happen so I know. Hopefully, I can't suck. prevent it. Even though I'd like to be like, you will not make Toy Story 4. Toy Story 4 can. Well, if anybody can do it, hopefully it's them. I mean, they are the guys yeah. controlling Marvel. They're controlling Star Wars. They're like the one major company that yeah. can do a cinematic universe. Yeah. So if Incredibles had a chance. It's Incredibles like should have a cinematic universe. Yeah. Uh, what right, else? Um, how do you feel about YouTube's like changes over the years? Like, just in general. I'm sort of a new YouTuber, really. Uh, so I've been doing that for a while. Like they went from the friends, then they changed the channel layout, then uh, they got I, rid of the groups. I was fine with them until they did the Google Plus integration. Yeah, that was, was the worst thing ever. Uh, I remember all the tanks. That was the that comments. was that was real bad. Yeah. Um, and they mostly have revoked that. I, I like YouTube. It makes they do dumb stuff every once in a while, like purges. I mean, would anybody really care about the stupid shit we do online if it wasn't for YouTube? You know what I mean? No, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. YouTube, it's, it's hard to hate, but like because without, to do something, we're like, come on, don't do that, please. Yeah, just don't Whatever take away certain on. features. Yeah. Like the thing that drove me nuts, like why did they get rid of the friends feature? Like the old channel layout was perfect. Like. Yeah. It could have used some improvement, maybe the text could have been outlined, but overall it was great. One thing they got rid of that blows my mind was the uh, video response. Yeah. Yes. Why did they get rid of that? And, and, and what's funny is I actually started re about the time that video responses were removed. Yeah. And I was just, I was watching all, because they kept the old video responses up, so you could go and look at all the old video responses, I'm just like, man, I, I feel like that... That could have been so cool for me to be involved in. Yeah, they got rid of that. Though. I was doing like tiny videos, nobody cared about them. But when I did re res, that's when it started to become something a little bit more important. But before that, I just, I never did those kind of videos. And I feel sad because a part of me is just like, I want to be able to have those quick conversations with people. Because now I got to go to conventions to talk to my fellow yeah, YouTubers. Yeah, like people like me. And we do it, right? So, yeah. I mean, that, that was, to me, YouTube is about communicating through video, not text. They I heard, uh, this is not my quote, but I heard someone say that recently YouTube has taken the U out of YouTube. Mm. It's mostly corporate too. Right? Yeah, to a degree that's... Like the only thing that goes viral anymore is like Jimmy Kimmel videos. Yeah, that's the thing that's really sad about YouTube. It's like it's not being about the content creator and more about people who already have some sort of recognition. Like, yep. of course Jimmy Kimmel's going to get a ton of stuff on YouTube. Of course Alan DeGeneres is going to get a ton of subscribers on YouTube. So it's like you start crushing smaller channels or just trying to make a name for themselves to the point where they got to go, like I did a video yesterday saying, it's okay to be content with X amount of subscribers. It's okay to record with a 240p camera. Use what you got. You know, that's just how it has to be sometimes. Mm -hmm.
you really don't have to have the best looking videos on YouTube. You yeah, know, yeah, for sure. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> you just gotta basically put just put put your time into it, put your effort into it. Mm -hmm. The effort doesn't have to be on getting the best lenses, the best cameras, the highest quality, the best frame rate. What really matters is that you're you're be being honest. Really, I think the honesty in YouTube is what being what real. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that are just like, are faking about, oh yeah, I'm a big fan of Pokemon. Yeah, Doramon's my favorite Pokemon ever. It's like... You can, people can spot that crap. Yeah, It's right? about just being genuine, you know? And if people don't like the genuineness, then get away, you That's know? Then you're not welcome on the channel then. Yep, I agree. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your Thanks. time. It's, been fun. it's an honor talking to you both.